This is Pre-Calc 11, Chapter 2.2. We're going to look at simplifying and converting radical expressions. Recall that radicals are another way of writing exponents. So, for example, square root 16 is the same as 16 to the 1 half, and that's equal to 4. The cube root of negative 125, that's the same as brackets minus 125 to the power of one-third, and that's equal to negative five. We have the cube root of 64, and when we have powers like this, you can also write it as two to the power of six, that's 64, to the power of one-third. And using your power laws, we multiply these two, so this is 2 to the power of 6 over 3, which is the same as 2 to the power of 2 or 4. And since radicals are powers, we should recall the power laws. a to the power of m times a to the power of n is a to the power of n plus m. And for division, we have a to the m divided by a to the n. And this is a to the power of m minus n. And not to confuse this one with multiplying, this is a power of a power. So a to the power of m, all to the power of n, this is a to the power of m times n. And writing these in radical form, we have the nth root of a times the nth root of a. We have a to the power of 1 over m plus 1 over n. And for division, we have the nth root of a over the nth root of a, and that is a to the power of 1 over m minus 1 over n. And we can have the power of a root, so the nth root of a all to the power of n is a to the power of n over m. Okay, let's recall the other power laws. a over b all to the power of m is equal to a to the power of m divided b to the power of m. So if we have the mth root of a over b, this is the mth root of a over the nth root of b. Next, we have a times b all to the power of m, and that's just a to the power of m times b to the power of m. And for radicals, we have the nth root of a times b, so that's the nth root of a times the nth root of b. And we have the reciprocal laws, 1 over a to the power of m is equal to a to the power of negative m. And here we have 1 over the nth root of a is equal to a to the power of minus 1 over m. We have another one for dealing with mixed radicals. a times the nth root of b equals the nth root of a to the power of m times b. And for notation, if we have the nth root of a, this is called the index. And if the index is left out, it's implied that it's equal to 2, if blank. Okay. The inner part is called the radicand. And the whole thing is called the radical. Okay, if we're going to compare radicals without a calculator, we're going to use this trick from above. So, if we're comparing a set of radicals, and it's asking us to find the largest, we need to use that trick. So, this equals 
the square root of 3 squared times 5. This equals the square root of 2 squared times 7. And this equals the square root of 4 squared times 2. So this is the square root of 9 times 5, that's 45. This is the square root of 4 times 7, that's 28. And this is the square root of 16 times 2, so that's square root 32. So the first one, 3 root 5, is the largest. This is our temporary work. We don't write square root 45 as the largest because that's not in our set. These are equivalent, but we want to write our original radical down. So that's 3 root 5. Okay, here's another example, except we're not dealing with square roots. We're dealing with fifth roots. So this one equals the fifth root of 3 to the power of 5 times 5. This is equal to the fifth root of 2 to the power of 5 times 7. And this one equals the fifth root 4 to the power of 5 times 2. Now we expand these, so this is the fifth root of 1215 the fifth root of 224, the fifth root of 2048. So this is the largest. We write down the original one. So four times the fifth root of two is the largest. Okay, and you should understand some of these definitions. This is called a mixed radical, and this is called the entire radical. Although we can write the nth root of b times a, this is the normal convention. We always want the constant out front. And here, the entire radical, the constant out front, is just 1. It's 1 times. We can always multiply anything by 1, and it doesn't change the value. Again, we're going to use this rule to convert between the two. Okay, convert the cube root of 108 to a mixed radical. So we're looking for powers of 3. This happens to equal the cube root of 27 times 4. This is the cube root of 3 to the power of 3 times 4. Since the power here matches the index, we can bring that out front. 3 times the cube root of 4. 4 is a square, so there's nothing we can simplify from that. Convert 2 times the fourth root of 5 to an entire radical. This step is usually the easier one. So the fourth root of 2 to the power of 4 times 5. Make sure you're writing this as a superscript. Don't write it as 24 times 5. That would be a mistake. It's 2 to the power of 4. Equals the fourth root of 16 times 5, so that's the fourth root of 80. And the constant out front doesn't necessarily need to be an integer, it can be a fraction. So we do the square root of 2 squared times 7 over 3 squared. So this is the square root of 4 times 7 over 9, and we have square root 28 over 9. Okay, it's important to determine the domain so that you know what values are permitted in your expression. And the domain with odd indices are always all reals. 
So for the cube root of a, so the domain is all reals, a element, all reals. The domain for even indices, such as the square root of x, has to be zero or positive. Okay, so this is an even index. So the domain is b is greater than or equal to zero. Here we have the domain c squared is greater than or equal to zero. But since c squared is always positive, this means c can be all reals. Finally, if you have an expression for the radicand, you just need to do the expression is greater than or equal to zero. From here, you can simplify by isolating x, bring the negative one over to the other side, so that's positive. x is greater than or equal to one. And that completes this lesson.